Society as we know it is declining day by day. But as a black man, it saddens me to see other black men rob a dead man. As we know, I want to say thank you to the people who bought training. I want to say thank you to the people who are about to buy training and shout out to the nerd tribe. As we all know, Kevin Samuels is dead. He's been dead, I believe, seven months. And recently, I've come across a YouTube channel that is monetized. That is monetized. And it is posting his content. So... Kevin Samuel's family is being robbed because I, I'll, I'll tell you a story. My first digital product, making money A to Z with self storage unit auctions. Someone tried to steal from me. Someone on their website literally had my outline, my book posted on their website and I contacted them, sent them a cease and desist. And I was like, look, I will sue. I will sue. And they took it down. And I posted this on my community page and I saw several people, as long as the message gets out, as long as the message gets out. And I'm just sitting here like, I personally am disturbed that this person and there's another Kevin Samuels channel, God knows how many there are of people who are literally reposting his content and making money. Now, Kevin Samuel's main channel is up and getting views. So there's no need for all of these people to be posting his content to quote, get the message out. They don't have to do that. And I'm gonna explain why I am disturbed. I grew up in an America where you didn't walk across people's lawns. You wanna know why you walk, you didn't walk across people's lawns? One day you would own a home and you wouldn't want anyone walking across your lawn. I remember when I was living in Sandy Springs, my ring doorbell went off and there was this chick in my yard just walking across my yard. And I go out there and I was like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, I was just over here. I was like, excuse me, you know, you're trespassing. She looked shocked. I was like, please get out my yard. And she left. I was just like, this is just the way I was brought up. You don't go ahead and walk across people's yards. You don't go places you're not supposed to go. It's a matter of personal, you know, once having respect for other people's property. And based upon the re replies, it's still up on my community get page. The number of folks who are like, hey, long as the message, they don't really care. And I really thought about that. And I really, really thought about that. And the reason that they don't care is they don't ever feel that they will be in a position where someone could steal from them. These people are actively stealing. And because Kevin is dead, and I don't know the ins and outs but I, I have a strong suspicion that his family doesn't have his YouTube password and there's no one to go ahead and put copyright claims on this content and get it taken down. And, you know, I, I just sit here and I see this and I'm going to say something and it's going to sound extremely racist. I know this is black men who are doing this. It's not white men. It's not black women. It's black men who are doing this. And I understand that Andrew Tate, a lot of white men are reposting his content. So it's not just the exclusive purview of black men to conduct this behavior. But what I'm saying is, I know for a fact it is black men because I'm in Atlanta, scamming is all time high here, crime is all time high here, and this secure the bag mentality, regardless of the cost. So what if someone else, you know, Asians, this is why counterfeiting is crazy in China, crazy. They don't care. And one of the things that I am seeing is the degradation, the collapse of America. Because once again, this, this is not just Kevin Samuels. When I was a young man, it was commonly agreed upon that you would not talk to a woman that you knew had a boyfriend, especially even if you didn't know this dude, you know, she's like had a boyfriend. It's like you leave her alone. Just leave her alone. Now, I will admit that during my Craigslist protocols, I broke that sentiment because I was messing with married women and I knew they were married. And I knew they had husbands. 
and I still did my thing. A practice that I did for a few years and then just stopped because it simply wasn't right. It just simply wasn't right. And when I was a young man, there was these unwritten rules, these unwritten codes of conduct, how you conduct yourself as a person. There was things you would do and there were things you would not do. Gone, completely gone. You know, cause like I said, I put this information up here and I know that I am the, I am Dudley Do-Right. I'm telling you not to steal, not to embellish, to work hard, get your money the correct way. This is what I've been preaching and I've gotten so much pushback from black men. Not black women, not white men, not white women, but black men, which makes me consider this point that morally there's a high concentration of immoral criminal in men in the black community that will not conduct themselves with any kind of code of ethics, will not conduct themselves with any kind of morals. And and I see this and it's deeply, deeply sad because I am judged by these black men. Even though I live my life on par, I live my life correctly, I don't rob, I don't steal. When that black face is presented on social media or worse, the news in the jumpsuit. Everyone that sees that black face, subconsciously, when they see this black face, they see maybe he's not trustworthy. Maybe he's a criminal. I'll tell you a story. Years and years ago, when I had the storage auction business, we had a store in the city of Stone Mountain. And this was during this phase. We had a store in the city of Stone Mountain. We had a store in Tucker. And I talked to my business partner about closing down the store stores because foot traffic, the organic foot traffic was close to zero. We would make a sale here and there in these stores. But if we got a lot of people to come into the stores, they came from marketing and advertising on Craigslist. And you know, one day I was just sitting down having lunch with my partner and I was like, you know what? We need to close these stores. We're spending $5,000 a month and it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. And she said, I, you know, she, she kind of was a hesitant, but she kind of agreed. So we shut the stores down and then our profits, 5x because we didn't have to man the stores we didn't have to hire anyone to be in the stores and we we're able to focus on posting more stuff online so two years two years after we had left that store the city of stone mountain put out an arrest warrant for me because i did not renew my business license so one night and this is funny on that night i had a date i get picked up by um the cab police I get arrested and I spend not one, but two nights in jail. And here's the thing. I didn't have any speeding tickets. I didn't have any child support issues. I spent two days in jail and I have no clue to why I was in jail. And then my, I had, now this is where it got really, really stupid. I had the money on me to bail myself out, but I could not pay my bail. My business partner had to go to the city of Stone Mountain to pay my bail. She found the city of Stone Mountain cop. He would not take the bail money. So we had to wait until they opened up. And th this, this is where it gets funny. I had the money on me. They took my money and gave me a check, right? And when I went to the bank, the check they gave me didn't clear. And I had to go back to the jail, talk to them. They had to call the bank to clear the check. So we go to court and uh, I call my name and the judge is like, you know, and I said, like, I have no clue to why I'm here. And then the code enforcement officer comes up and I lose it. I'm like, I spent two nights in jail because I didn't renew a business license for a business that we moved out that building to two years ago. And the judge was like, oh, well, okay, you know, we'll just need to do a change of address. Charges dismissed, we'll get our money back. So as a consequence of that, I have a mug shot online. And anytime someone wants to make a disparaging video, they find that mug shot and they post it in the thumbnail. And years and years ago, uh, when I was doing the storage auction business, they was had a live hangout talking about my criminal past. All they had was a thumbnail. They didn't have any, cause it doesn't really give you a lot of information. But there was people like, you know, he went to jail, he paid his crime, you know, he paid his time. There was all kinds of theories. And the overriding fact that was driving this narrative is I was black, even though I did absolutely 
nothing wrong. But because I was black and because black men are consistently getting arrested, consistently participating in gang activity, participate, I was judged on the actions of other black men. And this is why this thing with Kevin Samuels is so disturbing. Because, you know, once again, I'm a content creator. I've had people try to rip me off. Literally, I've had people repost my videos. And typically, it got to the point at one point, I had so many people repost my videos, it became a nuisance, it became a headache. But these videos didn't really do that well for them. But Kevin Samuels is a totally different story. Kevin Samuels has been dead seven months. His YouTube channel still gets about four to five million hits per month. And I wonder who's getting that money. Because Kevin, here's the lesson. And uh, I did a post of my friend, my departed friend, Alan Roger Curry. And he had, his brother put up a GoFundMe. I donated some money to it. And I need to say this. I have a life insurance policy and I have instructions for if, if I die for my stuff to be taken down. And if you are a man of any type of prominence, you have any type of wealth or you have any type of income, you need to go ahead and create a will. But more importantly, leave a notebook with all of your passwords so your people can remove your social media and take that stuff down so people will not be able to rip you off. My partner, and this is where I get this, my partner, Francine, she had a notebook with all her passwords and when she died, her sister was able to get this notebook and to take her Facebook page down. I know of people who Facebook pages are still up that are dead and it's kind of spooky. So go ahead and set yourself up. And Alan was making money. So I don't I don't know because the money from his sales of his book are going into a checking account. Hopefully the wife has access. Well, because she was his wife and she goes to court, she can get access to that checking account and get access to those those book sales. So so it's just a matter of time. But I don't feel, based upon the fact that the GoFundMe was uh, put up, that these precautions and protocols were followed. So one of the things that, you know, I would say, if you're a black man with a family, make sure you have a will, make sure you have life insurance, and at a minimum, make sure that you have a burial policy that your wife or mother or someone can access to bury you. Now, Alan did not need a GoFund to get buried. His funeral was, I believe, on the 10th of December. So that was already set up. But as a black man, you know, Kevin Samuels, I knew Kevin. I've talked to Kevin. We weren't boys or friends. I'm not going to put that out there. I, But I knew Kevin and Kevin knew me. And one of the things that, and someone made a video about this. I had a heart attack in 2019. I was 52, 50, 52. 53 and there's this thing of black men dying young it's a it's a real thing and uh, I, I would suggest you start taking better care of yourself like I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow I go to my doctor's appointments I take care of myself hopefully you will do the same but as a black man it saddens me to see other black men rob a dead man i mean it's out outright larceny it's copyright infringement and we as a people this is what's funny you go back to the 1960s right white women we're having more babies out of wedlock than black women. At one point, it was very, very rare for a black woman to get pregnant outside of marriage. It was very, very rare. Black people were extremely moral, had a lot of class and conducted themselves to a high level. Like if you just go through the 40s to 50s to 60s and look at the old pictures of older black folks, you, they were literally dripping with class, dripping with respectability, and we've lost that. It's gone, it's gone, it's completely gone. We have a culture that wants to make a lot of money doing absolutely nothing, not contributing to the world, not building anything, not creating anything. And everyone wants to just like, society, 
as we know it is declining. Society as we know it is declining day by day. Because once again, I have confessed when I did some white collar crime and because I was brought up in such a moralistic environment, it troubled me, it bothered me that I was doing these things and I was robbing someone, so I stopped. There are many of these young black men, if they had those kind of skills that I had, because once again, I could actually break it down how you could do this stuff today. And if I, because literally there are people on YouTube who are wearing masks because the stuff that they're putting out, they know is illegal. They know it's illegal and this was why they're wearing masks. And if I wanted to put out the, the sauce, and if I came on YouTube with the Mr. T starter train and a little bit more drip and started using phraseology such as tap in, secure the bag, my viewership would explode because that population base of black people who are degenerate is huge. It's huge. You got people out here who wanna get business credit so they can have access to business credit cards, higher business credit lines, and they don't wanna start a business. They just want access to the credit. And you know, I see a lot of foolishness out here. I see a lot of foolishness out here. And fortunately, and if you notice, the content of this channel has changed. Uh, I don't care about a lot of views. I really don't. I care about my small, but religious, vigorous, nerd tribe, the people. There are a group of progressive black people who like this channel, who like the non-sexy, non-spicy, non-topics. They like the straight information, and I'm going to do a better job in the future of putting out more of that content. I don't care about the views because what I have seen with YouTube to drive views, you must participate in foolishness. You must participate in something that is debauchery. And I just refuse to do it. I refuse to do it. Like once again, if you notice that uh, I can tell you what's coming. Uh, on my channels, I'm going to work better on, you know, because I've hired an editor. And at some point, all of my channels will have edited videos. And it's going to take me some time because if you know this on two channels, I'm not really posting that much because I'm, I'm working in the background of getting another editor, working on the content. I'm just setting myself up for 2003. That's what I'm working on, setting myself up for 2003. Because there are respectable black men. There are respectable black men who would never ever think of robbing Kevin Samuels. They would never consider it. They would never do it. They're respectable, upright, classy black folks who want to start a business, who want to provide a service, who want to make money the legitimate and correct way. And these are the people that I want to serve. I am not about the, the drip. I'm not about tapping in. I'm not about any of that foolishness because that's not how I roll. That's not how I get down. And the late David Carroll talked about this stuff at length. He talked about it at length. David Carroll, Kevin Samuels, Alan Roger Curry, they all departed in 2022. And, you know, David Carroll was an interesting thing and he had this thing in the rabbit hole. But I submit that the small but vigorous but strong, the respectable, the classy black folks are growing. I don't feel that I am the only one as sick of seeing all of this bullshit. I am not the only one. So I refuse to participate because once again, I've been doing YouTube 14 years. I know how to make a video pop, but the things that I would have to do to make a video pop are the antithesis of many of the things I hold dear. I, I like if I wanted to pop this channel off, I could just sit around and talk about you know, shout out to the credit plug because he puts out factual, real information. He doesn't teach you how to get credit with bad credit. He teaches you how to fix your credit. He gives you data points. And he and I wholly agree that you're not going to get substantial business credit without documentation, i.e. tax returns, bank statements. You're not getting anything decent or nice without those. And if I was just to put up a channel talking about, hey, this is Glenda Cameron. I got to change your heart, man. I'm about to start dropping that sauce. 
and I just go ahead and get me a thick ass pendant. It don't matter if it was real. I go out and get me a fake ass pendant, put it on my neck, and start wearing Blasianda. Come on here, what's up, hustlers? And all that bullshit that ain't gonna help no fucking body but the creator who creates it and drives the views. I am beginning to see that a lot of these creators who put out that content, their, start, their views are starting to crash because people, I think, are getting tired of the bullshit. I, this is what I think. I think people are getting tired of it. And today, well, actually, I started this process many, many weeks ago, but I will not be putting up clickbait stuff like Richard Fain. I saw some comments and a lot of people are getting sick of, you know, because Richard's putting up stuff to drive views. And I'm not mad at Richard for wanting to drive views. I'm not mad at Richard at all because, you know, he is probably the least harmful out of a lot of characters that I can name. He's the least harmful. He doesn't put out inflammatory, you know, and his message is pretty much the same. But man, I'm telling you, um, we got to do better as a people. We got to do better as a people. Because if you're not disturbed that someone else is getting robbed and you want to charge it to the game, <sighs> You're a sad, sad person. You're a sad, sad person because this disturbs me. And this is why I'm speaking upon it. And this is why, you know, I had an offer to collaborate with a YouTuber who puts out content that I don't agree with. And that collaboration never happened. Like, once again, I am doing things. I'm conducting myself in a manner that I know that I'm leaving money on the table because I refuse to participate in the foolishness. I refuse it. Like every day I get approached with, you know, I want to do this. I literally get people who want to set up what I consider an internet scam. And I'm like, I can't help you, bro. I can't help you. I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to help you. So go ahead. Um, I'm going to do my best job ever to put out more impactful content. No clickbait stuff. No junk just things that really can help people or report on the news in a factual, actual manner.